we got some new information that shows that the trade the Habs made today for Jacob Perot is actually way better than we thought. We'll be diving into all of that, plus another big report on the David Savard front indicating that Kent Hughes wants a first and truly believes that he will get a first at some point for him. That plus Habs versus Hurricanes all on this episode of Habs Digest, so you'll definitely want to stick around. But before we get into the video, we're proud to announce once again this video is sponsored by Rentals.ca and moves are coming with all the rumors, all the reports, all the trades, Jacob Perot, David Savard, everything going on. Kent Hughes has been making some big shakeups, and if you feel like the Habs and need some extra excitement in your life, well, then it's time to move, and Rentals.ca has you covered. Rentals.ca is Canada's largest apartment hunting network. You can rent houses, apartments, condos, whatever you want. From sea to shining sea in this beautiful country of Canada, not only do they have great listings across all major cities in Canada, but you're also able to find neighborhoods of your choosing within those cities. It's really clean and easy to use their website. You're able to find great listings right there. 100%. Shout out, as always, to Rentals.ca. Huge Habs fans over there, huge supporters of this channel. So if it's time to move for you, check out the link in the description or the pinned comment below. Rentals.ca has you covered. Jesse, we're going to jump first into Habs versus Hurricanes. There is not a lot to talk about in this game. Well, you know, maybe the biggest story coming out of this game was the fact that Michael Bunting was held out for trade-related reasons and then rumors circulating and eventually culminating in Jake Gensel. Well, the pending trade call that should be going down very soon after this video is recorded to send Jake Gensel to the Hurricanes. We might touch on that in a bit, but as always, feel free to pause and take a look at the box score. Again, not a lot going on. Sam Montembo shined tonight. And the game scorecard for this game, which I don't have prepped for the video, my apologies. Joshua Waugh and Alex Newhook, they destroyed everyone else on the Habs, and uh, that's no surprise. Jo oh, we'll bring that up later. Joshua Waugh, Jesse, with the one goal, and with the other goal called back due to goaltender interference, which was the right call, unfortunately. He has been, like, these last couple games, he's looked like a different player. This dude is, like, he came up, what, halfway, two-thirds of the way through the season, and he's already, like, a bona fide top six guy for this somewhat depleted roster. Yeah, Joshua Wad, the pride of St. George de Bea. And what I'm really liking about him so much right now is this is attention to detail. Um, on his goal, we see him kind of snapping home that beautiful shot where he's using the defenseman as a screen. But we look earlier in the play at him really forechecking in the zone, getting a puck, getting his stick on the puck, kind of creating this turnover and then kind of being able to circle around and really capitalize on it. I'm really liking that. Seeing kind of the all-around game, not just from – from him, but also kind of maybe taking some pages from Slavkovsky of being able to kind of, you know, create those turnovers and then really capitalize it when we, so, you know, when he does get it. So you have to feel like Joshua White, he was doing his, his part tonight. Like if it wasn't for a couple of those posts, you know, there, like we were right there in this game. That was the best part of it. It was really competitive, you know, just unfortunately, you know, we had Tank Commander Gallagher take a very ill-advised again penalty in that third period, just as we were kind of Getting some momentum, but I mean, it's amazing to see what he's doing right now. If it wasn't a little bit for that interference on Newhook, you know, he was trying to get his stick on the puck. Yeah, I did feel bad for him. Obviously, Newhook wasn't doing that on purpose. But, you know, this would have been a tied game. It seemed like we were so close. Like, Josh, like the power play tonight didn't look so good at the beginning, but there was just when we kind of needed it at the end later on the second and the third, it just kind of disappeared for us there. But I mean, it was clicking at the beginning. Yeah, it was. And the Habs power play, it's looked good. Now, despite not getting a goal this game, now there were some bad moments later in the game, like you mentioned, but it's a power play that's really been improving. And, and once again, Jesse, the Habs are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. And like you said, Cole Caulfield hit a post. The Habs hit a couple others. There were some robberies by Frederick Anderson. Oh, by the way, great to see Freddie Anderson back in net for the Carolina Hurricanes. And he had a phenomenal game for them. New hook getting robbed on the doorstep. Caulfield slapped there. There was just... So much going on, the robbery on uh, on Mr. Mr. Anderson. Anderson there in that third <laughs> period. There was a lot of stuff going on, but hey, Habits went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Um, The only other thing I wanted to show before we move on from the game into some of the more interesting talk, though, Jesse, other than Joshua Wass, Sam Montebo, and the Habs again playing a great team game, is this graphic they showed about Slavkovsky. Just wanted to mention this, and I'm sure there's a lot of Slovakian fans watching this video. Shout out to you guys. Comparison is 19-year-olds in the NHL. Marion Hosa, 60 games, 15 goals, 15 assists. Slav, 62 games, 13 goals, 18 assists. And that's not to mention his very much improved board play, very much improved defense. This is getting better and better. Um, Just a quick thought on Slav, Jesse. I know he didn't have the best game tonight. I, we all know he's nursing an injury. That has been made very clear um, by Habs insiders over the past couple days. But he's still out there giving his all. 
Definitely, you know, still getting some chances all the same. But, you know, I'm so happy that we're tracking this because, you know, we've kind of had that conversation. It's still early in his career, but the way that he started it, you know, can Yurislav Kosby become the greatest player to ever come from Slovakia? Now, there is lots, you know, and Marian Hoss is right near the top of that list for many a reason, is playing an amazing all-around game. So I think that this is an amazing comp for Yurislav Kosby. Maybe we don't talk about as much because... I think just as good Yuri Slavkovsky is offensively, I think he adds to the game defensively. Even though tonight there was a little bit of a blunder on some bone coverage, you have to feel just over time with the size, his ability to win puck battles, board battles, everything else. So this really, you know, really contributes to that 200-foot hockey that Hosa was so popular for. And I mean, you know, he's following right in his footsteps. Yeah, guys, he's 19. There's lots of time. He'll get even better. It's very exciting. Uh, we're going to move on to some of the trade talk here. Some trade prices may or may not have been confirmed. Now, this just came out just after we recorded the video earlier. So if you wanted to see another little note on David Savard and the Jacob Perot trade, please check out the video from earlier today. But this is something that Brian Wild, call it the Wild, shut up, Brian Wild. What a great insider, well, reporter for the Habs. He said Pierre Lebrun on Overdrive said the Habs are getting a lot of calls on Savard, but they're not ready to give Hughes price. He adds Hughes can wait with Savard having term. And Brian, this is just his opinion, but I tend to very much agree with this, Jesse, which is why we're showing it here. His interpretation is that Hughes wants a first and believes one day he will get it and he can wait to get it. Now, one day doesn't mean tomorrow at the trade deadline or today, depending on when you're watching this video. It might not mean, uh, you know, as soon as the season's over. It could be this summer. It could be free agents. It could be next season. But he thinks he'll get a first for Savard. And based on the prices getting paid for some defensemen like the Joel Edmondson trade, Hey, David Savard is a far more capable NHL defenseman at this point than Joel Edmondson, even though we all have a soft spot for Eddie. Um, Edmondson got a third and a fifth. And uh, there are some other trades going on, Jesse. Teams are getting desperate for Savard. I just love that it's now basically confirmed from Pierre Lebrun that Hughes is setting a very high price, you can imagine. If Savard isn't gone yet, th these offers of second, third round picks that have gotten some other defensemen at this deadline clearly are not cutting it for Kent, and I love it. No, we need to get a first-round pick for David Savard. Montreal Canadiens fans will literally riot if we don't get a first for David Savard. No, I'm, I'm joking, of course. But he is loved in, in this city for a lot of reasons, right? Which is why you have to feel like maybe, you know, we're starting to hear more. It's adding more to the probability that maybe another demands, you know, is the one to kind of go, right? That is where we have the, the glut right now on this team. And if Savard isn't quite as lucky because of that high cost, right? Maybe who's your next likeliest candidate, right? You'd have to think, you know, something like a Jordan Harris. Obviously, some other candidates we've talked about on the decor here as well. You know, we know Johnny Kovacevic, right? So it's interesting to see that maybe it's shifting there. You have to feel like as it gets closer, the more that time is on Kent Hughes' side where they're going to feel a little bit more pressure to be like, okay, well, we need to do something to kind of address it. A lot of teams are really gearing up all the way. It's amazing that so many teams really feel like they have a chance at competing. And, there, and just to see all the activity, really, because of the teams feeling this way. So it'll definitely be adding some fuel to this fire going forward. 100%. There's going to be a lot of stuff going down between when we post this video, maybe when you're watching, and the trade deadline tomorrow. A lot of crazy stuff. you got to think. Savard's name is going to be tossed out there at least a few more times. Final thing we wanted to talk about. This, okay, look, the Jacob Perot trade, I know we talked about it earlier. Again, if you haven't watched that video breaking down why it's why we, we liked the trade, check it out earlier. But there were some more revelations when we looked a little deeper into this Jacob Perot trade. Uh, of course, Jacob Perot for Jan Mishak, that was the trade earlier. Seems like an AHL level thing. Well, if you take a look at Byron Bader, he's very much into the advanced analytics here for hockey prospecting. Here's Jacob Perot for Jean Misak. At the 2020 draft, he was quite high on both of them, more so Perot, but the confidence that either is an NHLer has greatly diminished. That's true. Perot especially showed some decent productive moments in his post-draft years, but never consistently, and really fell off about halfway through his D-plus-2 season. Now, the thing about his D-plus-2 season is he was nursing an injury for a good chunk of the season, I believe. So, or maybe it was even the season after. But still, he the thing with Jacob Perot is he's had an injury, which has really, really... So yeah, basically, Jacob Pearl's profile follows that of a player who got a significant injury and kind of fell off. But if you look at this, just from a purely, like, from a prospect standpoint, take a look at these graphs for NHL probabilities and star probabilities. 
across the board, even if the numbers are not high, Jacob Perot is much higher across every single one of these metrics for every single one of their years since they've been drafted um, in 2020. And that to me is fantastic, even if, Jesse, this is just an AHL level deal. The fact that Jacob Perot has had such that high pedigree and has had such a better production, like, yeah, Mishak, 13 goals in 48 games this year, but only 20 points. Perot is on a much better scoring pace this year, no matter what. Even if Perot ends up not making the NHL despite his fantastic shot, um, he had pedigree from day one. And if that injury really is what has stopped his development sort of in its tracks, I think he actually has a decent chance of being one of those guys that really bounces back at the age of 22, 23. Why? Because that potential is there. And it's very interesting to note that when we're looking in the draft, draft year of Jacob Perot, that it's a 43% chance of him becoming a star player in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not exactly a 50-50 chance, but that was pretty close, you know. But now if we're looking and kind of comparing to where him and Jan Misak do compare now in their chances of making the NHL, it's Jacob Pro with that 69% chance, statistically speaking, compared to Jan Misak 16%, which is quite a difference, you know, in terms of, you know, that that probability, right? And of, of making that bottom six, there is a very high likelihood that we're going to see him potentially play some games for the Montreal Canadiens. If all things go well, he's going to have a chance to play on that fourth, on that third line. You know, as we know, we're still developing. We're definitely giving chances to these players if we feel like they they kind of deserve that opportunity. So who knows? Maybe this change of scenery uh, might be exactly what he needs because, I mean, there, it's showing, the numbers are showing that there is definitely some skill there. Yeah, and he is, uh, th this is something that's starting to excite me more and more. I've been watching some Jacob Burrow highlights. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, he pulled off of Michigan uh, not that long ago. So for, for the San Diego goals, he is he's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, even though he doesn't, he projects as a center like he maybe did when he was drafted. Now he is definitively a winger. Um, he, he can still bring something good. And like we've said in the previous video, the Habs have that top, one of these top teams for developing young guys, at least in the past couple of years, it seems. So really, really hoping that Perot can find his own here with Montreal. And even if it's just like a power play two specialist with a hard shot who can skate fast, you never know when that could turn into a decent NHL talent. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. What do you think about these stats for Jacob Perot? because honestly it's got us excited even if he just ends up being a top tier AHLer I think we'd love it I've been Josh Goss for my co-host Jesse Poitier we'll catch you in the next one